We out here testing out this diesel heater. It is awesome. We're gonna see how great it works, how much power it uses. Still icy out here. For this test, we're running the diesel heater for a long period of time, probably about eight hours. It's warm heat coming out of here. The battery is still showing full. And I have the heater on about the level four, the diesel heater. I charged the batteries up all the way, which is pretty cool. I was doing a lot of tests with my batteries and before I had this NOCO, I've never like stayed still and charged my batteries fully. When I hooked up this NOCO 10 amp power charger, battery charger, I realized that my batteries were only 25 to 40% full. That means they were empty. All the time I'm driving around with empty batteries. So I let it charge it up through a wall outlet with the NOCO. And that's when the battery fully charged. It went over 14 volts. Resting capacity is about 13.8, 13.6. But that's the first time that I ever saw the battery go that high and remain that high. Look at it now. I've had the diesel heater running for about two and a half hours. And I had the heating blanket on for a little bit while I was in the car earlier. Still have my curtains up. If you go in, you can see how everything is set up in the back there. I forgot I left that light on turn that off now i fold up this diesel heater yesterday and i used it for about two hours last night and you can see there where the fuel level is it's right here so i'm gonna keep an eye on that because i'm gonna have this running for another six hours the interface is in the front but there's nothing i can do about that you can't see it much because the sun the glare is blocking it but tonight you'll be able to see it when i show it yeah, this is the back view inside. I have the curtains up so it stays nice and dark inside. And I don't know if you can hear the charger. The diesel heater. But it's very quiet. I'll go closer so you can hear the noise coming out. This is an all-in-one unit with no muffler. This part of the pipe, ooh, it is hot right here. You don't want to touch that. That did come out hot. I had to get this guy in a picture. I keep leaving him out, but uh, he's still here. He's having fun. But I'm about to get back at Ikea after I let everybody play and they go back in. I'm going to get back in just to show you guys how warm it is and how you can sit in the car with no clothes on. Well, you don't want to be in there with no clothes on, but you know what I mean. Imagine you go inside and you have no clothes on and you get the knock. That'd be so funny. One of my little ones just had to run and go to the bathroom. So I had to cut it off real quick. But imagine you get the knock and you butt naked in there. No, nope, that ain't gonna work. So you have to leave some clothes on. I usually lay in there with like shorts and everything on and it's fine. Look at these guys ready for destruction. And Mac doesn't listen, he got up again. All right, let me see y'all take off. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, she got up and ran off. <laughs> he done found the water creek over here. He loves these water creeks. But here's where you gotta watch him. Because he gets into these water creeks, then he'll drink and drink and drink, and he can't stop. Then you have to worry about him going to the bathroom somewhere. Come on, Mac. Hey guys, please don't forget. We need your subscriptions. Subscribe to the Smalls RV Adventures. We love to have new subscribers. Don't forget about us, guys. The diesel heater is still kicking away. But I'm gonna go in now just to relax and show you guys how it sounds inside. All right, the kids are inside the trailer. I'm back inside the car. It's about 35 degrees. It's gonna drop down to about three degrees in the next couple of days. That's three degrees Fahrenheit. So I wanted to test out how this diesel heater is while I'm on the road so that we know we can trust it. We have all sorts of heaters inside the trailer, 
But in the car, I don't want to be running the engine when I'm on the road. So diesel heater will help out. I can put the roof rack on top. And I'm thinking about throwing a diesel heater on top as well. But let me show you the guys the temperature. It's about 70 degrees in here. So it's really nice. It's 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside and about 70 degrees inside. 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the thermometer there. Is that about a little over 70 degrees? That's still really good. But I'm about to get back there and rest up a little bit and watch some movies. I'm about to jump in the bed right back here just so I can see how it feels, how that heat feels coming out of the vent. Yes, that's the trailer right outside, right there. Kids are inside of there. But let me jump back in. And of course, I don't jump back there like this. I take all of this off so I can be comfortable. So let me get comfortable. I get right back to you, take my shoes off and jump in the bed. All right, I am in the back. Let me turn the light on. There we go. The more you do something, the better you get at it. So I'm trying to start getting into the back of the car from the front. <laughs> I'm out of breath. I have to show you guys how I do it because it's some sort of a difficult task just to do, but I want to let you guys know how I do it. There are also ways to shut the light out. In the previous segment, it was like a little space where you saw a little outside, but there's ways where you can shut all the light out. That's the vent coming in from the window there. I made a little hole in the window cover just so that the vent can come in. The window was open at about that much, but it's not much, just about three and a half inches, just enough for that three inch pipe to come through. And it fits nice. You can, you can barely see it. From outside, you can see it. That's why I wanted to put the diesel heater on the roof. On the roof rack, there's about that much space between the roof and, uh, and the rack. So putting this on top of the rack would bring it up even more so I don't have to worry about the exhaust pipe. The exhaust pipe would be facing outward. This hose here is facing inward. So I'm thinking about installing it that way when I need it because I took the roof rack off the car because I'm only going to use it when I need it. So at nighttime when I want to relax, this is just what I do. I cut the light off over here. I can sit back and watch some of my movies. Just have a nice chill evening. It's really cool. I have my fridge right next to me. It's really chill in here. I do have a really cool hotspot by AT&T. I have another promo that I did for AT&T. Again, I'm not sponsored, but that's what I use when I'm on the road. I use AT&T FirstNet as a mobile hotspot. It's unlimited for first responders, so it's really, really cool. And that's how I get internet wherever we are in the mountains or whether I'm in some remote location. But the internet is fantastic. I've never found a dead location, and I'm thanking God for that. But here's the AT&T promo that I did. I hope you guys like it. AT&T FirstNet, the number one cell phone providers for first responders in the United States. Follow the Smalls RV adventures as we travel all throughout the United States using AT&T FirstNet. Whether we're in the woods or the back country, we have the reliable service of AT&T, FirstNet. You can't go wrong. Do you guys see what's happening in the news lately? Oh my God. Like all of the violence and everything that's going on. A lot of the times when I'm not working, I just like to stay inside just because of all the violence that I see. I'm like, I'm seeing all of these active shooters that are happening all around the country. And I'm just like, wow, man. But you want to hear something really, really crazy? I grew up in not too good neighborhoods, right? When I mean not too good, I mean, it was not like on an up and up. These type of shootings happened so many times where it became normal to people that lived in those communities. People around the U.S., they were not aware of all of these things happening. But now because of social media and the wide range of news coverage, a lot of these events are being televised. So it's really crazy for people to see this. And it's kind of sad that it's becoming sort of 
normalized in a lot of the cultures and this is it's nuts the amount of violence and shootings and killings i just like to stay home when i'm not at work and just be with my family and try to keep everybody safe because like all of these acts of violence is very disturbing to me so that's why i just like to chill out go into the back country, go into the woods with my family and just relax. It's nothing like relaxing. And some people ask me, do you feel safe when you go out into the woods? Do you feel safe? Do you feel like, and like nothing's gonna happen to you? And I'm like, I've been out here for years. Nothing's really happened. I just come, I relax, I meet nice people, helping people, like the people that, that they show great empathy. If you need anything, they'll give it to you. There was one family, the Adventure Band, that you guys probably know them, and a tree fell on their trailer, a brand new trailer, a beautiful trailer. And so many people came just to help them. They didn't even know them, but they came to help to make sure that they were okay. Even if it was a meal, just to make sure that you ate. These are the type of people that are in the campgrounds and, and the, these places when you go overland and you meet nice genuine people and that's what i like to uh to be at. that's what i like to bring my family around nice genuine people to be around to meet and just to share the knowledge i learn so much just from the people that i'm around and i like to share the knowledge with you guys that's why i show a lot of the technology and the videos i know i gotta clean up some of the stuff is wires everywhere but I don't have much room inside of this small space. I've seen some other bloggers that did things inside minivans, and I'm like, how did you get your hands into these little spaces? And I'm thinking, are you guys like miniature? Because you can't tell everybody's height in these videos. I'm six foot three, and I'm in a Kia Sorento, so I had to make all of the space that I can. But some of the guys, they may not be as tall as I am. And I not only am I six foot three, I'm nearly 300 pounds. So I'm a tall, heavy guy with big hands. So it's kind of hard for me to get my fingers into small places to tighten up these screws and put the wirings in. So I have to do everything outside of the car and then put it in the car, hoping that it fits. And a lot of time it doesn't fit and I have to take it out and cut again just so that it can fit into the car. But I always wonder how some of these guys get these, all the, their electronics and these small little cases, the whole control board. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't do that. It, it is so hard. And some of these pieces are really big that you need to power your vehicle. I'll show you some of mine now. So these smaller pieces at the top, those I can put into small places. But when you come to like these big pieces like the DC to DC battery charger and your inverter, I'm like, where do you put those things? And then I also wondered, where do people store their batteries? Because I have to store mines underneath. There's two here and there's two behind this board to bring me up to the 400 amp hour. But I wanted to know like, where does everybody store everything? And then I have to be very careful because just in case of an accident, I have to make sure that everything is nailed down so it doesn't pop up and hit me while I'm driving or if I get into an accident. So everything is nailed down and it's also blocked by this seat. This seat is blocking everything where if something was to come loose, it still can't come forward because the seat is blocking it. Even this fridge is tied down. You cannot see it now, but everything is tied down. You can see some of the bungee cords that are strapped in just to keep the wood tied down with the fridge. I couldn't be more happy with the setup of this battery system that I have here because it works phenomenal and I cannot complain. Let me straighten out this camera because it feels like I'm on an angle while I'm talking to you guys. All right, that's a little bit better. The car is not leveled. I have leveling blocks that I can level the car out with, but I didn't put those on. Maybe I do need to put those on, but um, I love the way that this battery system works. 
it's still at 100% and my voltage is still way above 13 volts, which is like really cool. If you looked at the battery level chart for LifePo4 batteries, it tells you that, you know, anything like 13.6 resting, that means you're not on the charger, that's at 100%. But once you fall below that 13 volts, that means your battery is like going down to like maybe 50, 40, 30%. Once you fall below that 13 volts, like if you see like 12.8, and that's what I was seeing before. That means my battery was like at 30%. I never fully charged it. But now that I have this DC to, I don't even know if it's an AC to DC charger, but it's like a no-co battery charger that plugs into the wall. You hook it up to your batteries and you plug it the other end into the wall. And it works phenomenal. It's like, I charged the batteries for like a whole day in a garage and it was really cool because when I took the bat when I took the car out of the garage, I saw that my battery level was at 14 volts. And I'm like, I've never seen it there. You know, some of the odd times when I'm driving, you'll see it like that. But this time I've never seen it like that. So it was really, really cool just to see it at all of those volts. And I'm thinking with 400 amp hours of battery that's about my math is not that good but let me try it out that's about 4,800 watts of power now typically when you living in a van or you doing SUV RVing or whatever you're doing you're not going to be using that much power you may be using a small iPad or a laptop to recharge it and these things don't pull that much energy. At most, you're gonna be pulling 60 or 70 watts. A large television is only gonna be pulling about 70 or 80 watts. When I talk about large, I'm talking about like a 55 or 60 inch television, it's only gonna be pulling about 70, 80 watts. A small iPad is pulling anywhere between 10 to 15 watts of power. That's per hour if you leave it plugged in and it's charging. Once it gets to 100, it's not going to take anything anymore. So if you're using, let's say you're using 100 watts of power continuous, you won't deplete your batteries for two days. That means you can stay with the, what, 400 amp hours of battery. You could have everything on in your vehicle. Let's say it's just it goes to 100 watts for two straight days with no charging before you deplete it. Right now, I have on the diesel heater, I have on two LED light bulbs, and I have on my iPad, and I have another iPhone charging here on the side. And I'm not using much power. My battery, I'm looking at it right now, and sometimes it'll go down to like 13.1 when I plug something in, but then it just goes right back up to like 13.3. And the battery, it says, uh, my one monitor says 100%. The solar charge controller says 13.3. So that's pretty, pretty awesome if you ask me. So here's the battery monitor. It's at 100%. Here's the solar charge controller. You see it fluctuated between 13.3 and 13.2. This is phenomenal. My test with the diesel heater is phenomenal. I trust this thing and it works really, really well. Here's the 10 amp NOCO charger that I've been raving about. You can't beat that. That is great, great, great to have. You can't beat it. And then even iPads, this iPad is big enough. I had my games mobile device with PlayStation in here and it was huge. I had nowhere to put it. So this iPad is big enough where I can watch live TV and have everything that I need sitting right in my bed and it's right at my fingertips. I can fall asleep watching TV and not even worry about my battery power. Here's the current temperature inside of here. It's about 71 degrees. There's still hot, 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 wonderful, wonderful heat coming out of here. And the hoses, oh my God, those are warm too. Another thing I learned about these diesel heaters is that 
it's taking power once it cuts on. And you can even raise up the temperature and the blower fan when it's coming out. And it works really great when you first start so you can get everything warm inside. Then you can turn it down. The temperature will stay the same. Like it will still raise because uh, once that blow plug, once it, sorry, I have to, I don't want my iPad to go off. Let me start this movie. Once the glow plug heats up, it's going to stay hot. And that fan is just going to blow that hot air in, no matter what level you have it in. It's just the, mat, the, the force of the air coming in. So if you put it down on level three, you're going to be losing less diesel and you're going to have a lot of nice air coming in. And you can feel it blowing. It is nice. I really, really like it. I ain't complaining about nothing. And then tell you guys about the remote that comes with it. It's a small little handy remote. Wait, let me get my pillow. Because I don't like my head resting up against the, uh, the thing here. You can take this off. And it just expands your headroom by like maybe two or three inches. But I like it there because I can prop myself up a little bit. But anyway, this remote is very small. So you can even put it on your keychain. You know, it hooks up like that. You can put it on your keychain or you can just leave it in the car. Because it looks like it's very easy to lose. So me, I think I would just leave it in the car when I'm not using it. And when you're sitting here, let's say that you don't feel comfortable sleeping with the diesel heater on, or you're just really uncomfortable, like you're hot and you want to turn it off. This thing is really cool because look, this slips down and you have all your controls right on here. You have an off button, you have your on button, you have your power down like the fan and you have a power up. And look how this slides right up so you can't accidentally touch anything. And it just slides right down. So this is pretty cool. Now, people that get diesel heaters, you may not know how to use it. When you cut it on, you just hold the on button, the power button, and it's going to fire on. It's going to take about a minute to a minute and a half before it starts blowing that hot heat. heat. So you have to be careful about power stations. Some power stations can't wait that long without uh, something drawing a lot of energy because it cuts off automatically. I ran into that problem with a couple of the power stations that I had. So I had to just put it right into my uh, contraption here, my electrical box that I have here. My electrical box that I made, my solar generator that I made myself, it has the cigarette lighter out the outlet and that's what I use to power the diesel heater. But the portable solar portable solar panels, you know I'm tired. The power generators, the ones that you can buy, like the Jackery or anything else like that, those have the time limit where if you're not drawing a lot of power, it will cut off. That's why a lot of people have problems with their fridges and everything. But if you make your own solar generator with a cigarette lighter adapter, you can plug that into there and you will have no issues because that power is going to be continuous. So that's what I've been using for that. And it's been working greatly, greatly. I apologize for this video being so long. My intention was just to show you how good these diesel heaters work. And don't be scared because it looks like it's a lot to hook up. It's really not a lot to hook up. Most of the parts, like the all-in-one portable ones, they come all together and all you hooking up is like one power wire and that one power wire you can hook it up to a battery where you can get your power that way or you can make it into uh, a cigarette light adapter that's what i did i cut off the endings that would go into the battery and i connected a cigarette lighter adapter and i used it that way where i don't have to hardwire it into anything but if the easiest way is just for you to hardwire it into whatever contraption you're going to use, it can be a regular car battery. If that car battery is charged, you put the negative with the negative, the positive with the positive, and this thing will work. It will fire right on, no problems. If you have a little more skills dealing with electricity, 
you can cut off the endings, the terminal endings that's already on there. And then you can buy a lot of these cigarette lighter adapters from Amazon. It costs about 10 bucks. You can find some for about five bucks. Make sure you buy a couple because they come with fuses and sometimes the fuses pop and then you have to replace the fuse. But they come with the same type of wiring. They have a red wire and a black wire and you just connect it right to the diesel heater as simple as that there's no reverse polarity so nobody's trying to trick you like a lot of these companies are this one is very straightforward and it works very easy so don't be afraid of getting yourself a diesel heater it has wonderful wonderful heat and it feels so good right here i was in here a little earlier with shorts and a t-shirt on I have all my sweatpants now because I was out playing with the kids, but having this type of heat and the uh, winters in the Northeast is a total game changer. You don't have to worry about icing your car or anything because this thing would take care of it. The only thing with the portable all-in-one ones is that it's hard to find areas to mount it because it's just one tall piece, but I'm thinking about doing it on a roof rack on the top of the car once i put the roof rack back on the car that's the easiest option for me remember guys if you like these videos hit the like button if you stuck around this long please consider subscribing and if you want to know any questions about this diesel heater i didn't go over the brand because it's not a sponsored brand but if you want to know any questions about the diesel heater or which ones that i'm using i'm going to put a link for it down in the description and you can pick it up or ask me any questions about it that you would like please follow us on social media we are smalls rv adventures on facebook instagram and tiktok where we have a lot of fun on those platforms and we let people know about upcoming things that we're going to be doing or current things that we're doing through pictures and reels we also on patreon i'm still trying to work out the kinks with that and trying to get some new patreons to come on over so you can check us out with that if you know anything about patreon send me a comment below because maybe you can help me out because i need some help trying to uh get that out there more and again any products that you see in this video that you want we have it in our amazon storefront if you purchase anything using our links Amazon does give a kickback to us just for showing you guys the products. The link for our Amazon storefront with all the products that you see us using or that's inside of this vehicle, including batteries, are inside our Amazon storefront and the link. More than ever is the overlanding gear. So once you hit the link for the Amazon storefront, just look for overlanding gear and you'll see all of this stuff. Some videos I have with a lot of the gear in it, they're clickable videos. So check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Until next time, see you later, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure get yourself a diesel heater. These things work great.